good morning, Center Point Church. It is great to be with you this morning. We are going to worship the Lord with a brand new song. This morning we're going to sing through the chorus so that you can get the hang of it. There's nothing that Jesus. 
Oh God, we praise you that you are the God of the impossible. God, you are bigger than any problem or any circumstance that we face, Jesus. We praise you for that today. Amen. in your eyes There's no question in your mind God Almighty God of mercy There's no hiding from your face striving in your grace, God of mercy, God Almighty, let there be light, open the eyes of the blind. with your fire reading us we pray Jesus have your way
Hello and welcome to Centerpoint Church Online. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning. My name is Pastor Ashley Hankins. I am the Associate Pastor of Discipleship and Leadership Development, and I'm so glad that you're tuning in this morning. If you can, go ahead and in the comment section, say hi, tell us where you're watching from. We would love to hear from you. We miss you dearly, but we are so glad that the church is alive and well today. Kids, Pastor Brandon and Hannah have uh, prepared a special message for you. So parents, there is a link to YouTube in the description. So go ahead and click that and the kids can get joining on their service this morning. Uh, ladies, guess what? We're having another quarantine. Get it? Quarantine. It's awesome. It's cheesy. It's great. Um, we would love for you to join us. It's going to be May 23rd at 2 p.m. So whether you're new with us online this morning or if you've joined us before, we'd love to have you bring a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and let's just have some good old friend time. We can't wait to see you then. As well as we are in a special season of giving and Convoy of Hope is an incredible organization that we support and they are um, in a mission right now to feed 10 million uh, people this year. So as a way that we can give back, uh, we are selling t-shirts in the sermon series Greater Than that we're in right now. So go ahead and get to the website or click the link that is coming in the comment section right now. Buy a t-shirt. 100% of the proceeds are going to go back to Convoy of Hope. So we would love for you to join us and then show us what your t-shirt looks like when you get it in the mail. And finally, Last but not least is giving. We love to give. I, we're so thankful that you're a giving church and we have the honor and the joy to get to give this morning. Um, giving is an act of worship. So let's worship together this morning in our giving. There are multiple ways that you can give, whether it's online, on the church app, you can text to give, you can send some um, something in the mail if you would like to the church office. Whatever is the best way for you, go ahead and do that this morning and let's go ahead and pray over the offering. So Lord, we thank you so much. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you this morning together. We thank you, Lord, that we have the chance to give back to you what you first gave us. So Lord, would you, you, would, would you bless this offering this morning? Would you anoint it? Would you uh, further your kingdom with it? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we have some exciting news happening today. Um, we are going to welcome Pastor Keith this morning for an incredible message with a special guest, Pastor Gavin Brown. So go ahead and tune in. On February 23rd, Ahmad Arbery lost his life. He was going for a run like he normally did. It was a normal run for him. And two men, because Ahmad was black, tracked him down, armed themselves, and Ahmad lost his life. And as I was, it wasn't until uh, last week that a video recording of that event was made public. And then we realized that the two men that had uh, tracked him down were not arrested and no charges were filed. This really angered the black community, which we can understand. I began to look at some Facebook posts uh, from some of my friends some pastor friends, and I began to see what had happened. And so I was made aware. And then I looked at some posts from some, uh, some of my uh, African-American pastor friends, and I realized that this deeply impacted them more, uh, more than I thought. And so I have a friend, Gavin Brown, we've been, pa we've been friends for, uh, for a very long time. We're in a life group together. I've, um, and so I called him and I said, you know, how, how has this impacted your life? You know, can we just talk for a minute? And we had this conversation and he just 
let me in on his world and how this impacts him and it impacts the whole black community. And I thought, you know, we are we should be one community in this. We are especially in the body of Christ. When when my black friends hurt, uh, we should all hurt. We should all mourn together. And so we met together in Vienna, Virginia, and we went for a run. Many people were running for uh, for Ahmad. It was his 25th birthday last Friday. And so there was this big thing, run with Ahmad. And so we just decided to get together, run together the two miles, and then have a conversation. And I want to bring you in on that conversation. I think it will be uh, helpful as we think through this uh, injustice and how we uh, are part of the healing process. I'm with my friend Gavin Brown and we are going to do a, a run today together because of, uh, of what happened. Um, Man, just recently in the news, yeah, with Ahmad Aubrey, and uh, it just came out February 23rd. Uh, he was killed by a couple of people who kind of ran him down, and he was out for a run. I think you were telling me his father was just saying out for his normal. Run. Yeah, he he was an avid jogger and enjoyed running, and that's something that really you know pricked me on Wednesday night when I uh, read about a little bit more after a Bible study after seeing the video. And, uh, and yeah, he just something that he, he enjoyed doing. I, I read I read your post yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, and I it really triggered in my mind how um, how hurting our friends are, uh, and you and, and other people, and it just really stirred my heart and my and then I began to look a little deeper, yeah. and we talked to each other on the phone yeah. and Absolutely. thought we'd just do this together Absolutely. and have some conversations along the way. Um, I haven't run in a long time, so I'm not sure how this is going to work. <laughs> exactly. But uh, we're going to do a little running together, a little talking together. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we can talk about, we'll talk about racism. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, see how we, what voice, what little voice we have. You're right. At least we can offer it. No doubt. In this moment. No doubt. And uh, see where that goes. So you ready to run? Let's do this, man. We going to stretch first? Uh, a little bit. Okay, here Let's we go. Do ready? Yeah. All right. Done. All right, let's go. <laughs> so the thing that happened mod yeah with all that in mind now what does that do what did that do to you yeah when you saw the video absolutely you know when i saw that video and again it was five minutes before a virtual prayer meeting i'm seeing it i'm taking it in and i'm watching this young black man just go on his daily run or you know a run and, and two guys who are also maybe in the imago day approach him armed and i was just thinking about if that were my son, I would want him to do his best to de-escalate. And I think for a mod in that situation, de-escalation was, let me at least go after this shotgun to perhaps spare my life and not become, you know, another statistic. And I was just thinking whatever was in those guys' hearts to pursue him with weapons, did they first think about this is a valuable person? who has life, who has the right to live. And again, I'm not in the motive in the hearts, but if this was three months ago and that happened and whatever, one of the guys, the father, of course, was a former you know, police officer in law enforcement, they, in their minds, I think thought, hey, I can take this life, file whatever report and go about my way, go about my day, go about my own life. But yet there's a life here that is gone. There's a mother who's, you know, grieving along with father and, and, and his sister. And it's just a sad situation. And so. And it happens way too often. Yes. As a, you know, as a white guy, I, you know, it's so easy for me to dismiss it. And yeah. Yeah. that's one of the things that really, I don't know, the Holy yeah. Spirit has kind of really convicted my heart. Mm. So you can't keep dismissing stuff. Yeah. And, um. And I was reading a book uh, that I was telling you about called The, the uh, Unholy Ghosts of America, yeah. talking about racism. Yeah. And he likened these kinds of moments to, to lightning, where lightning kind of exposes everything for just a brief second, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you see all the flaws. You see everything. Yeah. But then it goes away. The lightning goes away. You're and right. so does the exposure yeah. of, of darkness and You're right. of, of wrongfulness. and 
I think these kinds of moments for me tend to be like mm-hmm. those lightning moments. You know, you get all excited about not excited. About, yeah, yeah, no, here you know, you're passionate about saying you're something. right. And then you know, a week or two for me, it, it's gone for so many of us. You're but right. it's not gone for you. It's yeah, not, and, absolutely. I mean, and and here's the thing: we're running a day. I did not get up fearing we're going on a run today. i am be honest with you. But at the same time, do I think about certain parts or pockets of our nation that may be, you know, hazardous for any type of walking, whether it's daylight, you know, nighttime, um, you know, in concern? Absolutely. Or even walking in a store. Or walking in a store. I mean, I mean, whether you're profiled, whether you're looked at, again, these are things that matter of the heart. But I think, again, Keith, um, you know, you gave me a call on Saturday and it was about talking about this situation. It was a heartfelt, you know, I think sometimes people fear what they don't understand. But I think going ab- above that fear, not saying you were that, but is perhaps saying, hey, let me enter in. And a lot of times I think the best way is through a friendship, you know, relationship and just to say, hey, let me listen and hear how this is affecting you and just listen. And um, it doesn't mean you can't talk later. You know, the Bible says be, uh, you know, slow to speak, um, you know, and um, slow to anger, um, but quick to listen. And so, you know, the, the listening, the sympathy, the, the empathy is so, so needed. And I think, you know, the church has a big role to play in that. We've been friends for a long time. Yes, sir. I was thinking, it's about, I guess, 13, 14 years Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, in a small group together. Yeah. That doesn't make us heroes. No, 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 no. But it does give a different perspective because we have a relationship. Absolutely. And I think in that relationship, because of that long term relationship, you're able to speak. Hopefully you're able to speak freely. And, no doubt. and I do, too. And we all have our we all come with stuff. Yes. And, you know, I was. I was afraid of today that I would say something stupid. I hear you. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Like, here I am. I'm going to say just no. something's going to be offensive or, exactly. or whatever. But, you know, at some point you just got to risk it. Absolutely. I, I wrote yesterday a little bit. You saw it just that I think we have to remove the fear of coming off ignorant or I'm going to mess something up and just say, hey, if there's a mutual, you know, uh, relationship and I know you love me and, and, and it's reciprocal. I'm going to be more than forgiving of something that you may say that, you know, oh, let me take that back. Or I never thought how that comes. Up. You know what I mean? And so I think that fear, perhaps even on both sides, there's pride to not hurt and, and, and not come across. Oh, why did I say that? I can't. No, let's let's get over that to just say, hey, let's have a conversation. Um, yeah. You know, for Peter, it's I was reading this morning and it talked about uh, love covers over a multitude Absolutely. of sin. I think oh that. Oh, my goodness. And so he's talking about having a relationship. Yes. And in, in relationship, in a loving relationship. Yes. It, forgiveness is easier, no right? Like Absolutely. I, because I know your heart. Absolutely. I know your mind. And, yep. Yep. And, uh, I, I think that's that's the only way we're going to get through this, yes. really, is, is learning how to love. And that's letting God do a transformation of our heart. No doubt. Because that's really what we need. You're right. I yep. don't need more information. No, 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 no. I mean, it's it's helpful. It informs me. But You're right. But, you know, we need a transformed heart. Yes. In this yes. To love each other. No doubt. And it takes humility. Right. I've got a, you know, Jesus had a lot of privilege that Philippians 2 talks about. But he didn't use that, you know, quality for God, something to be grasped. But he made himself nothing. And I think sometimes Coming to someone with the assumption that, you know what, I don't know what I don't know, um, you know, and I'm not going to come off and appearing or to use some of my cherry picking points to go after that. But let me just start from scratch. I just don't know what I don't know. And starting there, and that, starting that's there. a great yeah. place to be. There's nothing to gain. There's nothing to lose if I'm, you know, humble to, right. to admit that and to say, I'm just here to listen I want to share, perhaps, you know, tell me how this sounds. Does this make sense of my perspective? All that type of stuff. I don't assume that just because you're white and, you know, quickly haven't jumped on to share something that makes you a racist. It doesn't. I just know it at the same time. And perhaps sometimes the church has been to this. We haven't sometimes allowed open dialogue for the fear, perhaps, of we don't want people to be offended. We don't want to scare people off. And 
like you said, if love covers a multitude of sins, if we just started with some of that humility, the importance of listening, sympathy and empathy, just because you aren't in my skin doesn't mean you can't bear my burden. We're called to do that. Um, yeah, because it's it's a we. It's, exactly. it's the human race. Yes, you know, no it, doubt. It's, no doubt. We're together in this. If you're hurting, I should be hurting. Absolutely. You, we're part of the human race, but also we're part of the body of Christ. You're right. You're right. And it's like I love what Mark Lehman says. He says mm. somebody gets saved in my church, then somebody got saved in our church. That's good. Yes, the kingdom, like, no doubt. But if somebody mourns, absolutely, then we all should. Mourn. We all should mourn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weep with those who weep. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Absolutely. It's, it's okay to lament. Yes, I think, you know, it is. Uh, it is. And there's many, yeah, there's many, you know, black people I could say in the black community, even within our church, within our movement, that are troubled by this. It doesn't make, you know us wrong it doesn't make oh here we go again it just makes it real people are hurting people and what comes to the surface a lot to these things pastor keith is this personal experience um you know the 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 the, the mindset of okay here we go again okay we know our arrest was made but are they going to be acquitted later on that these are the things we're talking about martin luther king it just you stirs know, up he all mentioned, over, exactly all it over stirs again. up it yeah. brings things to the surface and you know, I read again, I'll just read it here, Injustice Anywhere, Martin Luther King from Birmingham Jail, he said, Injustice Anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. And what you just said, we, we are caught in an in inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. And if that truly is going to be realized and, you know, attained, then when these moments happen, we have to perhaps pause and say, hey, I'm going to pick up the phone or let's get together. Let, let's talk. Uh, let me hear you. Let me try to understand. I may not understand everything. I'm not even coming off as if I will after even this conversation. But at least, you know what, my brother, my sister, you're going to be hurt. You're going to be hurt. We made it. <laughs> this is great, my friend. Love you, man. man, the cross. You got a cross right There's here. There's a cross right there. I think we ought to stop and pray. Absolutely. I was thinking about Galatians 3.28, where it says that uh, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Um, that's our God. That's, that's the love of the Father. He sees us all as one. And again, if one suffers, we all should. If one is struggling, we all should be struggling. But uh, this the cross the is a <laughs> place of reconciliation, right? No doubt, no doubt. It's where the the, uh, the love of God and the, the yeah. depravity of man yeah. they meet together. Absolutely, at the cross. no doubt. He gave His life for us. Yes, and we should give our lives to each other. Amen. And, uh, Amen. I, mm. Let's pray for each other. I pray yeah. for you. You pray for me. Absolutely. Let's do so. Father, thank you for uh, Gavin. Thank you for Pastor Gavin. Thank you for his church, his ministry, his yes. life. Thank you for the difference he's made in my life. Thank you for his friendship. I do pray that you would bless him in this moment. God, he has a voice. And I just pray that you would use his voice for good. Use his voice for healing. Use his voice to to inform and, and, and talk to me in my heart. God, I bless him. And Lord, just bless his family. And, and let... I just pray that an amazing work will be done in their lives and through their lives. We surrender our lives to you today. Yes, Lord. In Jesus. Name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you so much for Pastor Keith, his life, his influence over me and my family, even counseled me and my wife and marriage him along with his sweet wife, Esther, and his beautiful kids. God, I pray your blessing over them. Lord, I thank you that long before all of these things, uh, we had a relationship, first and foremost, with you but Lord, as well with each other, that allows us to come together in the spirit of brotherhood to bear one another's burdens, to hear one another out and to show the love. Lord, thank you for this opportunity to communicate um, the power of the gospel, um, the power of the gospel. Lord, we know that our weapons are not carnal, especially against racism and the issues of racial injustice. But Lord, we do know that we set our eyes on you. Um, you're our only hope. And so we ask as we move forward that the conversation, if needed, that it will continue, that, Lord, this could be perhaps a little bit of encouragement, inspiration, 
and um, Lord, a green light that it's okay to engage, especially when love is covering a multitude of sins, Lord. So we just humble ourselves anew. We're thanking um, you for your love and your grace. And Lord, we just ask that we would move this conversation forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> cool, man. Good stuff, baby. Thanks, Pastor Gavin, for, uh, for just hanging out with me and having this conversation. I trust it's meaningful. Uh, I know it was to me. Pastor Gavin's going to be speaking next week, and so I can't wait to, uh, to hear him. Uh, he's a great preacher, and he's going to be uh, sharing a message with us next week. We arranged this weeks ago, so uh, it's not by coincidence, I don't think. Well, Let me share just a thought or two about racism and about a transformed heart, because I hope this is obvious to you, that racism is a sin. Racism doesn't reflect the love of God. It doesn't reflect the character of God. It doesn't reflect the mission of God, and it doesn't reflect the creation of God. God created us in his image. He created us. And so the only way to to deal with racism, knowing that it is a sin, is through the is through allowing Jesus to transform our hearts. When we surrender our lives to Christ, everything is surrendered to Christ, including the way that we see others, including the way that we talk with one another, including our attitudes towards each other. Jesus Christ can transform our lives. He can transform our hearts and give us a heart of love. John chapter 13 says, So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. This is a moment in which the body of Christ can demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ and prove that we are followers of Jesus Christ by loving him. If we surrender our lives to Christ, racism cannot survive in our lives. It cannot survive when we surrender our lives to to God's word that teaches us. It takes a transformed heart. So where's your heart this morning? Where's your heart? Are you allowing God to transform your heart, your mind, your life, your attitude, your relationships? In this moment, allow Jesus Christ to change change your life. We do this by a simple prayer. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I'm not where I need to be. I surrender my life. Come into my heart. Change me completely. I give it all to you right now. And maybe you're a believer and yet you're still struggling with some attitudes. Maybe you need to allow God to continue to monitor your heart. Just as America has to continue to monitor its heart in this, we have to continue to monitor our hearts. So allow the Holy Spirit to do that in your life. This is a great opportunity to talk to your kids about this. One of the things that are missing in the conversation uh, in the video is when Pastor Gavin talks about talking to his kids. And one of his girls says, why am I, uh, why am I a girl? And he took that opportunity to talk about how God created her. God created her a girl. God put her in that family. God made her this and God made her this color and he just celebrated what how God created her. Listen, this is a great time to talk to our family about God, about being created in the image of God and how everyone around us is created in the image of God. Let, let that rule your hearts and let the love of Jesus Christ rule and reign in your hearts. Above all, Peter says, love each other deeply. Into the world you created, trading your crown for a cross, your winged eye, your innocent life paid the cost. Counting your status as nothing, the King of all kings came to serve. 
washing my feet, covering me with your love. Is more of you means less of me. Take everything. It's all of you. It's all I need. Take everything. You are my life and my treasure. Pastor Keith and Pastor Gavin for an incredible word this morning that we needed to hear today. Let's continue the conversation, continue loving one another well, and we're going to see you next week. Have a great week, Center Point Church.